Hey everyone, I am doing a short review. Well, maybe not short, but I'm doing a review of uh, a little run I was doing on uh, my stream, uh, which is uh, Factorio, and it was Space Exploration uh, 0.5, because there's a 0 0.6 like right around the corner, so uh, I have to distinguish that, and also Crestario. Um, so those were the two major mods that I was kind of using with a, with a couple others uh, here and there, mostly quality of life. Uh, nothing too crazy. Um, and I'll, I'll kind of explain what uh, the mod is in case you've never seen it. Um, and obviously, maybe a little bit more about Factorio and stuff in case. Uh, I mean, this is a 400 hour run uh, that I streamed literally all of it. Um, from Right from beginning to end. Uh, nothing off screen, so uh, there, <laughs> there's a lot of content there. Um, and then I'll also talk about a little bit about uh, point six, which has, I'm planning actually I'm running through, but it probably won't be as long uh, as this one. This one was a long one because I was learning stuff and doing some other things. Um, so yeah, um, so let's get uh, started. Uh, so um, I'll kind of start, by the way, this, we are kind of in spoiler territory, but um, I mean, most of the stuff you'll probably figure out if you play it. If we start to get into real spoiler stuff, I'll, I'll just warn you before. How we do that. I'm not talking about any of the endings or anything like that. Um, just uh, well, uh, just how to do, basically do the basic endings in in this mod kind of thing. Uh, so kind of the way. So what this essentially is. So Factorio, as you know, is like you know it's a factory building game. Um, this one. Um, so this mod essentially uh, kind of brings in more of a logistic challenge to it, which I like. Uh, I've talked a lot about on the stream um, things like um, Bob's and Angels and other kinds of mods like that that basically change. Uh, basically, they're kind of like they just uh, overcomplicate production chains, which isn't really fun to me. I don't really like that because it's like, oh, you have this byproduct. What do you do with it? Oh, you have this that you, comes out of this and you need to use it here and things like that. Um, for the most part, um, that stuff isn't fun because you solve it like once or twice and then you're bored. You don't want to you don't want to do it again. Uh, at least uh, as far as I'm concerned, I don't really want to do it again um, as well. Um, so. Crestario um, is more of a total conversion. It's like a Factorio Plus kind of mod. So it adds a little bit of those production chains to the game, uh, which I'll show off in a, in a minute here. I'll, I'll basically point out things that come from Crestario and things that come from space exploration. So it does add a couple of those kinds of things, but not too ridiculous. And they're they're relatively fun and they add like a lot of um, good buildings and things like that and, and fun stuff that you can essentially add to the mix here. Um, as for... Um, uh, as for space exploration, that adds more of a logistic challenge to it. So a lot of a lot of what you do is, if I go here, this is a new screen up, by the way, in, in space exploration. Um, you basically, uh, as you can imagine, the mod is more about like exploring other planets, things like that. So you start on uh, Novice, which is your basic uh, bumhole planet kind of a thing. Um, so you get like a, a day-night cycle, which is uh, relevant for solar because as solar is down, you basically have to last that seven um, seven minutes at night, essentially. Uh, so either you need accumulators or some kind of steam backup or something like that in case you know you decide to go that way. Uh, radius is important mostly for uh, things like core fragment mining and also just plain clearing the planet. So if it's a planet with a lot of biters, I know the threat is zero right now, uh, which I'll get into in a second. But uh, ra yeah, anyways, radius is important because a smaller planet has other attributes like obviously you can't build as much. Um, they're easier to clear and also um, very importantly, uh, rockets are cheaper to uh, launch from there because obviously you don't need as much fuel to escape the gravity well. So that's an important factor. So sometimes you do like big planets. Um, so you kind of plan out your your bases kind of uh, 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 around that. So on a big radius planet, you can do a lot of core fragment mining, but you have to then figure out how to bring a lot of, enough fuel for to launch rockets uh, to bring all the things that you need from there. Um, anyways, uh, so you have, uh, so threat is obviously how many biters are there. Uh, so if you had a planet with, uh, uh like 67% threat, that's like, I don't know, like a hundred percent, I believe is just like death world, everything up to max. And then 67 is just like something else. Um, so you're going to notice that there is going to be b some biters here. Yeah. So they're going to spawn and they're going to be jerks kind of thing. So, uh, for the most part, what I did was I, um, avoided anywhere where there was biters. Um, and if there was, I, I basically killed them immediately. Um, but I'm well in, into the game where you have other options of dealing with them. So novice, I actually, I did start with default settings with like uh, biters on it. I just killed all the biters and then just said confirm hostile extinction. And then that's an option they give you uh, because you can trim surfaces and also delete them if you want to. Uh, this does not delete things you place down. 
um, or or trim things that you place down. But it does reset like ores and stuff. If you mine something out, it will come back kind of a thing. Uh, this is important for like uh, maintaining good fi uh, file size for your save. Uh, so that's pr that's particularly what you use it for. Because if you like scan an entire surface, um, you you probably don't want that being saved. So you don't really care about the explored chunks. Then you go like delete and and, and uh, trim it. So it's a pretty cool system. Uh, anyways, um, so yeah, so you got solar 100%. So some planets have less solar. Uh, so obviously, the further the, well, the way they are from the sun, uh, the less solar they will have. Uh, things like that. That's kind of the basics. They also have some attributes like uh, waterless. So um, you'd have to bring in water. Um, and uh, another attribute is butter meteors. So this is an attribute with anything with this resource called Vitamin Lodge, which is like a kind of like a, a live resource kind of thing. Um, that's, it, it has biter meteors and the logic here is that, uh, if you don't shoot down meteors, this meteors is by the way, a, a kind of a sort of new enemy type. There's new kind of disasters and stuff you can kind of deal with. If you don't shoot down the meteors, um, they, the logic is that they're underneath the ground and it'll just kind of spring up and stuff. So you just have to make sure you just shoot down the meteors and things like that. Uh, anyways, so yeah, uh, that's kind of, the, that's kind of the gist of it. So essentially what you do is... Uh, so this is my uh, this is my lovely novice, uh, which 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 has a bunch of beam text on it. Um, so essentially, you um, essentially the space part of the game comes a little bit sooner. So normally in Factoria, you're going to launch a satellite. That's the point. Um, so when you launch a satellite, the game actually starts in in space exploration. But you do get it like uh, two techs sooner. Um, the 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 entire tech tree is basically kind of changed around to basically fit that. Um, so in this case, I have a cargo rocket. So this is a different kind of rocket that you have. Um, you can set up some very interesting and different, uh, cargo, uh, logistics, uh, with that. So essentially what I did was all of my, uh, rockets go kind of to, uh, basically a little icon that shows what the landing pad accepts. The way it works is, um, it will scan through all the landing pads of that name and it'll see if it's free. If it's not free, then it won't launch. That's only if you launch on, on, uh, on cargo full. Uh, there's a couple of conditions here, as you can see. Um, this one in particular uses launch on green signal and when cargo full, uh, because I have a system of um, certain rockets, basically, I prefer to use first. Uh, so if it gets a signal in, and by the way, you better like a circuit that works with this, so. Um, anyways, if you like, if you like, uh, <laughs> Um, if, if basically, if there's another uh, core fragment rocket that's available somewhere, somewhere else, I prefer to launch that first rather than the one over here. Uh, core fragments is, by the way, the infinite resource uh, generation that they have in this game. Uh, so it's it's um, it, if you basically can use it really well and actually you know prevent the entire system from clogging up, it works really well. And I'll, I'll kind of show you how that system works in a bit. So, uh, but anyways, uh, so yeah, that's kind of what you do. And then I have like a generic landing pad for every single. Um, planet and things like that so this is obviously my sur my surface i started on but i i just i w cleared everything um so a lot of what i did was so this particular run was a times 10 science challenge um so basically i just took the the science multiplier and you just kind of go if you look at any of these these are just multiply well the so the beginning ones are not multiplied by 10 but when you start to get down there uh now they're like times 10 so this would normally be uh, 100 and 1,000. The reason they do that is so like the very basic stuff that helps you get automation going. Uh, do you really want to be handcrafting for like the beginning of the game? Probably not. So they get you, they give you cheap ones just at the start, which aren't affected by the multiplier. And then it gets really expensive after that. Anyways, um, so essentially what it is when you when you do something like time send challenge on, um, on a game like this, you are doing a mega basing strategy. That's what you're doing. Um, so when you're mega basing, it's essentially you're having to, you know, uh, really scale hard is the main thing. Uh, and, and you have to kind of worry about those kinds of like logistic issues that you kind of have with that and like, you know, optimize for UPS. Um, so I saw, I actually looked at a couple runs. So you can see I'm, I'm hovering at about 30 right now. Uh, usually it's about 40 to 45. Um, so I don't know why it's 30 at the moment, but if we actually go look at if I load up here uh, to hide mod GUIs. Sick. There you go. So this guy gives you an idea of my breakdown of what exactly is uh, taking so long to render. So when updates over six, I believe it's like 16.6, .6, uh, then you start sacrificing frames. A lot of it is entities, um, trains and um, Script update also does a little bit too, but we'll see entities at this point. And if I were to actually, you could break it down by surface on 
on uh, what what entities exactly are, and it actually actually gives you a count here. I didn't realize it did that. I can have a new Linux install here, so I uh, haven't actually run this yet here. So these ones are not actually contributing a lot, but if I go to like one of my main surfaces here, a lot of it what you're going to see is uh, logistic bots are eating a fair bit. Um, surprised that they're eating so much. Well, it's using literally all five thousand. Um, so, uh, loaders are also using like between two and three. Uh, loaders were, have been particularly bad. It's the first time I've done like a basic science kind of thing, so this is probably why it's it's uh, so bad right now. But I'll get into some of this, the things I learned about UPS and stuff. But um, all things considered, um, even if I'm at 32, this is still pretty good for uh, um, because I'm essentially running the game at half speed at the moment. And if I were to stop like the, my science, I'm sure it would go back up to like 50 or something. Um, but I have learned a lot about uh, optimization, but this is considered very good for a times 10 run. A lot of people uh, get like really, like, uh, like they, it really starts to slow down, especially if you're not being that optimal with your uh, science and stuff like that. So you do have to be very careful with that. Um, so it is it essentially from the begin from the get go. I treated it as a scaling challenge, and uh, and, and you know I, I did pretty well. Um, I did very well. I was hoping to keep 60 the entire time, but obviously clearly that didn't exactly happen. Um, yeah, about when I got into about the, some of the deep space science research, so very late game science, when I started doing spaceships, then it started to go downhill. And I can kind of guarantee you it's mostly due to ships and stuff that kind of tipped it over the edge. I was hovering around 60 uh, up until then. So the minute I started going to, you know, the actual space exploration part, um, that's when my framework just took a total dip and that was it. Uh, anyways, so some of the other mechanics. So um, I just went to another surface, um, so I have plenty of surfaces here, so I was showing you Novice beforehand, and you, as you can see I don't have too much of it explored, it completely runs off solar, the reason I run it off the solar, you got a lot of power options, but this is actually the cheapest on performance, and this is not a complex surface, it's just core fragments, uh, that's all it does, it doesn't do anything else, and so that's why it's so cheap on the, um, on the uh, front here, it's just, uh, it's not doing very much, which is good. I think this is, is this a count of the a number of things? I don't think it is, because I don't have 17 assembly machines. I definitely don't have 17 decider combinators. I don't know, I've never seen that before. I don't know why. Um, that's, a, like, that's a surprise to me. As you can see, we did have a rocket launch, which is why it, it basically came in there. Uh, so, like, you know, you can you can launch as many rockets as you want and things like that. Um, anyway, so some of the kind of basic stuff of how I kind of set up my factory. A lot of it is, you kind of look over at the, um, kind of like the... The satellite view kind of thing. By the way, I'm 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 in space right now, and the, one of the nice things is you can navigate satellite around, like around. So one of the main uh, mods that I did use was so I wanted to make a train heavy base, uh, but I did feel that uh, vanilla trains did kind of lack a little bit of some advanced functionality that you you would want to have out of your uh, trains. Usually, a lot of people use things like LTN, uh, and I didn't want to use LTN because LTN I felt was like a uh, basically a, a big atom bomb when you just needed like a small, um, you know, little fix. Especially since uh, LTN is not exactly what I'd call the best on UPS either. Uh, it basically just sends the trains around and it's it's like a logistic train, like a, like a logistic bot. It'll just like you say, I want this at the stop, get me all this, and the train will the trains will basically figure out where to go and where to get it kind of a thing. I've used it sparingly, so that may be, not be an apt description of it, but... Um, but that's, that's essentially it. So I, I opted to not use um, LTN in this run. Uh, and I think it was pretty successful uh, without it. Um, so essentially what I do is I have um, very simple conditions. And I would change them in the future. Um, and I'll, t I'll tell you what the flaws are of it. Uh, this is probably not a good example. But uh, let's try another one. Uh, this one. Okay, so uh, the first thing it does is when it restarts its orders, it looks, at, it looks as if it needs fuel. So this uh, this is train control signals. So this is a mod that you can kind of put. Um, this has a skip signal. You're not supposed to use it. It's something that the mod adds uh, to every train. Um, and it essentially says, um, uh, if you need fuel, go to the fuel stop. If you don't need fuel, then just skip it. Uh, and just waits for it to be inactive for three seconds. So it will need fuel when it hits uh, one stack. And then I'll go get some fuel. It's a very simple loadup. And it, it's great because you don't need to... Uh, worry about logistically sending fuel all over the place. It just goes straight to it. Um, the next thing it does is this is a depot signal. So it basically says, if I can't get to my next stop, if the next stop isn't free, and you have to use basically uh, train limits for this. So if my next stop isn't free, uh, go to the depot and wait there. 
So that's why he's at the depot right now, because there is no, uh, this is the resource Vimalage. There is no Vimalage provider stuff. So I use the chest to indicate if it's something that wants it or something that's providing it. Um, and I have very simple conditions on it. I just say, wait for a full cargo inventory when you get there. That's all you have to do. Um, and uh, and then once once it's done, it it will basically go to and empty the cargo at whatever stuff sub wants it. So it, it completely empties it and you're done, kind of thing. So it's a very simple uh, logistic system for the trains, but it does mean that like you're carrying around one single item for the trains. There's no can't really mix and match them. I have done a little bit of mix and matching. Um, but you have to basically take that into account, and I'll show you the mix and matching systems that I have. Uh, they're mostly in space, though. Uh, and yeah, so that's that's what I did, and and essentially all my stops uh, work like this. Um, my regrets for this, um, so this doesn't did, this didn't actually cause a lot of deadlocking. There was a couple of issues that did cause my trains to deadlock a little bit. It was mostly when I didn't have enough um, stations in the depot. But if I would to do if I were to do this again, which I will be doing it again, um, the things I would ba basically change would be. I wouldn't have a centralized depot. Well, I would have a centralized depot, but what I would try and do more is, um, to me, a full train uh, full of whatever materials it needs is a good train, and that should be the that should have a depot in the middle. Uh, I didn't do that, unfortunately, uh, which means what it do, what what they will do is if there's no requester station asking for anything, it will just wait at the provider stop and kind of block it for other trains that are at the depot, which isn't a good thing. Um, but you kind of want another depot down, signal down here. Um, what would be even better is you have specific depots for specific resources. So you put them kind of close to things that, um, close to areas that they would need to be, um, that make a lot of sense for it. Um, so in this case, um, so the, we have a generic depot, that, that's great, we can do that uh, for those really overflow issues. But like Vitamalage, like all my Vitamalage stuff is like way up here, whoops. It's like, it's it's all here. So why are the trains going all the way down there? You know, they're, they're, that's pretty far. Um, so it's causing causing some pathing delays. Uh, obviously when something, you know, could use it, it would be great uh, if it could uh, use it. Um, also, yeah, and, and, and I, would, I do prefer that they do wait um, until a stop is free, because that, that makes it so that they go to a stop that actually needs it and not necessarily, and then I can expand the factory accordingly. But yeah, I would put, um, basically depots that, that are kind of scattered around the base kind of a thing. And there's specific ones kind of a thing for, for these kinds of trains. Um, that would be my main thing that I would do. Uh, I'd feel a lot better if I did that. Um, but we'd, we'd, I don't know. That's that's kind of what my new design would probably be. Um, I would try to fill up trains and then send them, send them as close as they can to the destination. Because to me, I like it if like, if two stops or three stops um, for requesting become free, I want them like the trains all to path there and do their thing kind of thing. So. That's kind of cool. Um, anyways, so yeah, so we have a train heavy base uh, that bas basically makes a lot of stuff. Uh, a lot of this stuff is, uh, some of this stuff is crash jarry related. I'll kind of get into that. Like the way the fuel is created. Um, if I go to FNEI, which is one of the recipe um, kind of creators or like a searcher, so you can search what it is. So crafting it, this is the very um, crash jarry specific. Um, and so one of the pieces of feedback I have that they actually fixed in point six um is that uh so by the way um anything that's anything that's one of these 16 second ones is absolutely useless uh because essentially the way you have to scale these is with electrolysis machines um essentially and uh and that is um so ammonia requires you to do atmospheric condensers uh with uh, nitrogen and um a hydrogen you can't get from the air anymore uh, they, they've disabled that recipe so they did a lot of balance stuff, but it's not like good balancing because it, it was like it was kind of like the kind of balancing where it's like completely worthless. Like you just don't you just you just don't use it. Right. And the, the offset was supposed to be that this was free, but it's free doesn't mean much when you're like when you're in a game that's like very UPS intensive. Um, so it's free, but it costs your frame rate. So which is not acceptable to me. I'd rather just use my <laughs> the oil that's in the ground to make my fuel. Uh, because that's to me free as well and, and much cheaper as well but yeah a lot of a lot of what they did is oxygen uh, oxygen is required for all these recipes um waterless planets you don't allow you to place um atmospheric condensers despite the fact that they have oxygen on them again this is something that they did fix in uh 0.06 uh for space exploration so if you actually use it with that um you can actually use atmospheric condensers now on waterless planets they just won't get you water anymore 
because uh, that's actually one of the recipes that you can get. You can get water from it, and that's why they want you to place it. Um, but you should be able to use oxygen, because there's you're breathing on a waterless planet. Although that also may not make entirely a lot of sense, but that's kind of how it is. But anyways, uh, so yeah, you would never use this recipe. You would never use this recipe because it's hydrogen chloride. Um, again, it's something that requires like, like a ton of electrolysis. It's like basically hundreds of gigawatts to get that to work with hundreds of entities doing things. So you just don't use it. Uh, this is the only recipe I've basically ever used, which is you do light oil, oxygen, so oxygen comes through the air. It requires a lot of oxygen, by the way, uh, and iron plates, and that's it. Um, I would say that the base uh, space exploration recipe is much cleaner, uh, but like I said, they have cleaned it up a little bit in, in, in uh, point six. So if you're gonna start a run with it, it actually isn't that bad uh, now. It's just what I found in my run. Um, and the last one is you get volcanic blocks with a little bit less oxygen. And the whole point of that is that gives you an option on waterless planets to um, make fuel there. And I actually did attempt this and it was really bad too. <laughs> so um, essentially um, 500 oxygen, Again, the only way you can get oxygen is you have to do electrolysis because you can't do uh, atmospheric condensers. So uh, that one, that one was just a, like it. Would, I basically, I, I, I looked at the basically the amount of power it would need. I'm like, no, I'm just gonna, like, I'm just gonna fly in fuel, and that was that was what I ended up doing. Um, and so that's my logistics. Is I actually just send rockets with fuel all over the place. So it's kind of cool. Um, Anyways, so yeah, so a lot of a lot of the game is essentially um, you basically have like a landing pad and you basically say I want something and then it will come from another surface. So if you set up the logistics accordingly, it would be pretty good. So I'll just show you a simple smelting setup and everything. It would essentially go and say this is a copper uh, setup, but I have conditions on these circuits that are looking at the chest. And so obviously I would prefer to use this is my core fragment setup. I would prefer to use this because it's free ore, right? So I have a stop here that's... Um, available right now. So the stop is currently basically looking at the contents of the chest and saying, if I can accept a train load, which is under 65, this is the stack size for Crestario, by the way, because uh, you do get extended. If it's under 65, it means I can support it on a train. A train could come here, unload its stuff, and that would be it. Um, so I would prefer if it would use that and, and prefer if it would drop off anything. So there it is, it's loading up right now. And it will come over to the stop and drop off its stuff whenever it's done. Um, so it's just it's just loading up right now. Uh, but I don't want also it to stop. I want I want um, it to use the resources from regular mines if if possible. If I if I don't have enough from core fragment mining, which is a thing, it happens all the time. Uh, so I have a system here that has if the ch if the box has less than twenty five, so we're getting kind of low on it. Then please take it from from here, which comes from another planet, which is uh, my little planet of Aporia, and this one has a rocket that sends over. Uh, more copper fragments so you can see that the, the train is loading it as well and that was kind of the system i did i did set up for this um so i, I was kind of happy with it it was a good system for that um as for core fragment mining it's pretty interesting uh it's a uh, by the way spoiler if you don't want to if you if you're planning on playing this and you want to solve core fragment yourself uh, i'll tell you how i did it um anyway so i, I basically dro drop off core fragments to one centralized location I go, I process them, I turn them into iron, copper. Basically, it's all these resources. And if you can't use them all, um, you basically stall the entire system, which is the problem. Uh, and that's the problem you're trying to solve with it. And the way I solved it is I have it going all into one little chest here. And this chest basically sorts it. Um, I have way more core fragments than I know what to do with, to be honest. Uh, so um, I basically have like one. Uh, I, I intended to have this a copy and pasteable thing, but I actually I never ended up doing it because it actually made too many core fragments for me. Uh, most of the time I find it's basically just avoiding it uh, because that's the thing that you have to do is if uh, you have too much of something. So, for example, I have too much stone, I need to void it and I void it as landfill currently. So you can see that there's like a ton of um, landfill in these resources and things like that. And here it's trying to put um, some stone back in the system, things like that. Um, so you have to basically figure out how to void things that you don't want to basically have overfilling everything. Um, Pretty simple to do, uh, pretty straightforward. Um, so uh, that, that, that's essentially the system, and then I have trains that basically do it. I have a really cool system for priority train stops, which I'll show off as well, uh, which I thought was a really cool system. But yeah, that's kind of what I do, and then it goes through the typical Crestario process um, of, uh, um, it's this uh, or enrichment of ore. This is changing in point six to like ingot um, stuff, which is majorly changes it, the recipe path for this. So this obviously is not compatible with um, 
5.6, so whatever you do with that, it's going to be way di look way different. Um, but essentially, ore washing is one of the things that Crest Dryer brings to the table, and also brings you like these really nice large furnaces, these really nice chemical plants, things like that. Um, it just does a super good job at, the, at that kind of stuff. It does, um, the Vulcanite is a space explosion thing, so this is the nice thing that they kind of did. They did kind of conglomerate them both, so that like it does actually use some of the space exploration resources and things like that, that in a way that makes sense. So even though you're playing, you know, this Crestario, which is like a new game plus kind of a thing, it does this does work really well. It does work extremely well. Anyways, um, yeah, so that's how I solve core fragment mining. Um, there's a little bit of stuff here to solve scrap as well. Um, there's a, some of these are a little bit inefficient. Um, I I would change some of them around a little bit, but yeah. Uh, probably mostly these stops for the worst uh, thing that I'll kind of get into in a, lo a little bit, but yeah. Um, other than that, um, you basically get some new things like you can make wood out of greenhouses. Uh, I think that may actually be in regular SE. I, I, I forget if it is in that. Uh, I know they have greenhouses in one of those mods. Um, but yeah, then you have like, you know, coke and, and st steel and some other kinds of processing. So I didn't need a whole lot of it. And this actually makes a hell of a lot of it as it is. So you can basically just kind of like deal with it as is. You get some really nice loaders with... Um, Crosshair 2, it's one of the main reasons that I would say to run it. Although, um, these are not exactly what I would call the most UPS friendly. And by the way, when I call, talk about UPS, we talk about the frame rate, so that's the updates per second. Um, but I'll get into what was the problems with that in a minute. Just kind of showing off the rest of the base. So yeah, um, very simple logistic system on different surfaces. Um, and essentially I just say, hey, I'm, um, for my rockets, Especially when it's bringing to space, this is a great uh, platform, by the way. This is a great, like, sorry, this is a great uh, area to essentially um, send rockets from uh, because, uh, like, it basically costs nothing um, for fuel. So 75 is the highest that it requires, but if it were to go to uh, Caladius, I think it's 47. Uh, Caladius is the sun, by the way. Uh, yeah, so it's about 47 just to send things to Caladius, which is really, really, really straightforward. Um, and I'll, I'll go into why I'm there and things like that in a minute. But yeah, so you just basically have a train stops that basically go load up into, you know, a warehouse. Again, I would not do this again, um, but I'll tell you what I would do um, a little bit later because this is my reflection upon my own run <laughs> as well. And then basically just sends out um, rocket fuel to wherever it needs to go. So this would be a system that I use to basically get it. So for example, if I were to... Um, want rocket fuel for, let's say, because I have to send the copper ore, which I just showed you, right? So Poria is, I believe, down here somewhere, is it not? Oh, there it is. Poria is a bit past the Caladius Astro Belt 1. Um, so here it is right here. So this is a very simple mining outpost kind of thing. So it essentially brings in uh, copper ore from the outpost like this. This one's starting to run out because uh, I'm near the end of this run. But essentially, it basically fills it up. Um, it will basically enable the stop. Um, so I basically use like an L count uh, that's, and that's a train limit. So you set the train limit to that. Right now it's at zero, but essentially when it, when it gets 32, it will, it will output one L. So that's one train that can come here. And then another train is another L. Um, so this, it adds up both by the way, uh, into the, cause it's the, it's the, uh, sum of the network. And so it would basically allow for two trains to come here. Um, I do very simple circuit stuff like that. I did do a complex one before that was like, oh, what's the rough cargo wagon size and things like that. I did some shit like that. Then I realized that simpler is better. This is just way better to to work with because it's just like, it's not a complicated uh, circuit network at all. It's very simple. Um, so yeah, it can, it can allow to chew trains here to go pick up stuff, um, which is pretty, pretty much the most I'd ever want to come to a location anyways. Uh, and that, that, that's, that's pretty much it. So it comes in. It goes, it comes down here, it drops it off at the depot, and this can this goes to both the rocket and also goes to um, uh, copper plates as well. And the reason I have copper plates is um, there's some surfaces, uh, particularly my science space surface, that I would never want to process ore up there because it's you want productivity modules. And if I'm already bringing copper <laughs> from this surface, or why would I bring it to Respedia? Why would I skip? Why would I have the middleman right? But I can just send the, the the direct plates directly to wherever they need to go, right? So that's why I have this kind of system. So there's like five locations uh, locations that look for plates, and it's definitely not Respidia. Respidia is the one I was showing you that was my main hub. Uh, that was the one I was just showing you before, so. 
with all the oil. It's a very oily planet, so. Yeah, apparently you always get one of these, but yeah, you always get a crude oil moon kind of a thing. That's pretty much it. Um, so yeah, so going back to here. Um, so it does it does accept uh, solid rocket fuel, and that comes from, again, Respidio, because that's where all my, all my my oil comes from. Basically processes it uh, with productivity modules. I used I used sixes and for most of my stuff because that was like I felt was a good one to kind of do. Uh, and then that fuel goes into the rockets and that's it. That's how that's that's how it is. So that's that's the production chain I, chain I kind of made here. And it works out really well. Um, but yeah, and then the, then there's like a generic stop. So um, so when you're doing uh, generic landing pads, um, so this is how you solve the problem of what if you need one off things. Uh, so obviously there's random things like belts and train tracks and miners and uh, productivity modules and all that kind of fun stuff that I don't want to produce on every single planet. You want to have a system where you can bring it from uh, Respidio or your main place, your main base. So you make all your main stuff at the base and then you just ask for whatever you need, right? So for example, um, so what I have, and this is the system I had, and it's kind of, I think it's on the wiki. I, I think I just took it from there. Uh, it's, a, it's a solid system. Uh, so you basically have the things you want. So I say, I want 3k belts. I want at least 100k, uh, sorry, 100 splitters. I want 100 belts. All this stuff all the way through. All these kinds of inserters. Um, the signals for the trains, tracks, uh, different kinds of chests, things like that. So you basically, you're basically asking for these things, right? So how do you make it not do too many of them? Well, what you do is you take the robot, the robot network. You say... I want to read the logistic content, so it will read the contents of that network. Uh, basically, goes into a thing. And it has to be you have to have some in it, so it has to be greater than zero. Uh, you basically times it by negative one because that's what you have. You want to remove it from your requests, right? Um, and then it basically adds up all of these, and then anything that's greater than zero, so anything that it needs, it sends out by signal. So there's a Poria to base, and a Poria comes here. So I have like little things here telling it where it is, and there it is. Uh, so this is all the stuff it has so far, uh, and then, yeah, so then the signal grabs it, and then it does a very simple thing where it basically brings it into, um, again, it basically looks at what's in the rocket already, um, and also I do a thing where I look at the contents of the, of the belt, because that, obviously there's a time where it doesn't have it, you don't want to over-ask for things. But anyways, yeah, so it would essentially, uh, in long story short, it basically takes, uh, removes whatever's already in the rocket, uh, from the from the request and that's it. That's all it does. So that goes into the rocket and it's not asking for it multiple times and, ch and chilling it up. So uh, once you kind of solve that problem, it's like, it's super straightforward what you do from there. Um, so for example, if I were to go back to Aporia and I would say, you know what? I kind of feel like I want 5K uh, belts now. You come over here and you'll notice that the, uh, this didn't change because I think it already has 5K belts actually. Yeah, it has 7K belts. Um, okay, we'll just ask for something random, like, uh, um, I don't know, what do we need? Um, let's go get, uh, I don't know, solar panels. We'll get, like, 10, 15 of these ones, right? So I go over here, you're gonna notice that it asks for now for 15, and once it delivers them, it will essentially, uh, they'll just be on the rocket, and that's it. Uh, the key to keeping the rockets going is that you just ask for way too many cargo sections and the space capsules, which are two parts that you need to basically launch rockets. If you ask for way too many, that means... Or will never have a problem in launching rockets because uh, and and these rockets will also never go so you, you can see it actually added a little bit too much of it as well and it'll probably add it maybe a bit more now that's fine but yeah it, it added like 20 because the bots sometimes overfill things and that's fine uh you just have to be accepted accepting of that kind of thing so that's kind of like that's a good example of like how complex the interspace like logistics can kind of get um but once you kind of solve it and wrap your head around it, it's actually really fun. It's really great, really great problem to solve. I love it. It was so so much fun to kind of figure out. Um, yeah. So uh, some other things that are kind of cool about this that are different from regular Factorio. Um, so one of the things that you have is uh, you have beacons that are a little bit different. Uh, so the beacons are essentially are there's now a beacon overload mechanic. So if I were to add another beacon down here, these uh, machines are effectively overloaded. Uh, and all you have to do for that is. Um, you just it's just one beacon per machine i i would really hope that the the devs would actually make, make that as a part of the core game because that that is actually a really good idea uh, if you've ever played uh standard factoria and you've had to do beacon setups oh my god they're awful um but this is like way better this is like um 
this makes it so you have like a lot of uh, modules in one machine. Normally you'd have like three, I think, in the in the standard. I don't remember what the vanilla is like, but I can't go back. I can't go back to like the the standard one now. This is such a good system for it because it's like you're you're building your machines around beacons rather than the other way around. It's a really good system. So it basically just shuts off the machine when it's overloaded, and that's it. And so it's just the way to make you do that. Um, so a lot of production chains in space are basically, uh, you can't use productivity uh, modules in space with the exception of mining and um, science machines. My science machines are down here, yeah. And you also have uh, up to productivity uh, level nine, um, or like level nine uh, modules, which is super cool too. Um, and just to show you kind of what the difference is. Um, so normally in Vanilla Factoria it goes up to three. They go up to nine, but it doesn't mean that they're three times better. It actually means they're twice as good. Uh, so uh, normally uh, speed modules go up to plus 50%, uh, productivity goes to 20%, 10% uh, productivity, um, and efficiency I, is actually really buffed in this one, uh, mostly because efficiency is considered one of the worst ones, because it, all it does is reduce energy consumption. It has a purpose in this mod, I'll say, because uh, you have power problems that you kind of need to worry about, uh, which I'll get into, but yeah. I don't make efficiency nines, I just make up to six, because that's good enough. Um, getting to nine is really expensive on copper, it's basically a giant copper sink, again in point six that's changing. Now sink of every kind of resource uh, for all these instead of just copper. Uh, but anyways, uh, so you have productivity nines, um, so you basically, you want to use the less expensive ones for things that don't really, you don't care as much about, and then use the really expensive ones for uh, things that you really need to go fast kind of a thing. Like uh, so, like your science, I put prod nines into it. Um, Naquium mining, or so Naquium production, I put productivity nines into it because I um, that one was a really that's when you want to get a lot of uh, productivity out of. Uh, what else? Um, yeah, that's that's kind of essentially what you get out of it. So, um, so basically, I, I just that's what I do. I, I mix and match sixes and nines, um, and and or is it a sixes are way better than. Uh, vanilla, uh, so it's it's actually a pretty pretty cool system for that. Um, but yeah, no, you can't use productivities mostly in space, so that's why you want to kind of have a kind of a land platform to basically use the most out of the resources you have and then send them up here, kind of a thing. Um, when you can't can't do anything else, so that's kind of the 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 gotcha about about space exploration is that some things can only be manufactured in space, but you can't use productivity modules with them. Sometimes you have to bring them down or back up and things like that, and you gotta you gotta kind of uh, concern yourself with those kinds of things of uh, where do you send things and, and how does that work kind of thing so that's that's kind of cool um, so again uh, so I as I mentioned I'm actually in Caladius right now which is right beside the sun the sun has a very good solar ratio of 15-21% uh, so if I were to actually look at my uh, my solar platform uh, solar thing so the flat solar panel 2's make about uh, 12 megawatts and then the um, the threes make 24 megawatts so they're like twice as good but they're really expensive so I actually try not using them too much um, I, I just figured I could place down well someone in my chat told me I could just place down more solar twos I'm like yeah that's that's a good point I don't know why I did that but near the end I kind of throw the threes down just to make sure my power is acceptable um, you also have the ability to beam power around, which is kind of cool. Uh, you can have like little setups to basically, this is like a very late game thing. Uh, there's so many power options and stuff and things that you can do with solar. Um, but you basically are spending your time beaming it at, at a certain point, which is kind of neat. Um, this is one of the actually, a uh, little feedback. Uh, this is one of the disappointing things about Crestario. Uh, so Crestario adds things like fusion reactors and singularity reactors, uh, which I, I guess I'd never unlocked. Um, those are inferior to uh, this SE ones. A lot of the SE problems are you want to basically do things like condensing water. Um, so this would be like you generate steam, the steam generates power, but you don't want to get rid of the water because you have like a waterless surface. Water isn't free, right? Uh, so a lot of the Crestario stuff still assumes that the water is free, so you don't want to use the Crestario stuff. Um, and even things like the Singularity Reactor, which is really good, apparently is, uh, has the speed of ships, so you, you don't really want to use it. Um, there's a lot of, like, little nerfy things that they did, uh, with a lot of it, which isn't very clear. Uh, but it is, you can assume that the Crestario stuff, if it looks good, it, there's probably a catch. Um, either through UPS or something else. I'm not saying don't use Crestario. Crestario is great with the set of mods, it's fun. Um... But there's always a catch with it. 
I'd say. With the exception of the assemblers and chemical plants, the super ones, those ones are just better all around. Although, space manufacturers are really, are times 10, uh, or crafting speed of 10 rather than the five for advanced assemblers, but you can't use productivities in, in space manufacturers. So that, that's the thing you have to take into account. So you do use space manufacturers a lot, but if you find that you're using something with speed modules, it's just better to use space manufacturers as well, which is kind of cool. Um, so yeah, they give you a lot of weird little options here and you gotta just figure out what the best thing for everything is. But you kind of get uh, into the habit of it and all that kind of stuff. So all this stuff is kind of weird because you kind of get like mining drill. So you get this mining drill, which is the regular one. Then you get the slightly better one. And then AI Industries gives you the big one, which is supposed to be really good, right? And it is really good, but then you get another one and this is the Crest Trio one. <laughs> so this is mining speed of 1.2 with mining area of 9.9 .9, and big mining drill is one mining speed so an 11 mining area i'm not sure which one, i i figured that the this one is better because you get more more out of it so i ended up using the uh, electric mining drill mark three at the end but they're really close like there's some situations where one is better and one is not uh which is kind of weird because usually everything is a straight upgrade in this game um and so these are not actually straight upgrades kind of thing um, I, there was also a similar problem with the beacon and beacons actually got changed in, um, in the, the, the new SE. Uh, so I'll tell you how that kind of works. Um, so if I were to throw down, let's, 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 let's do one of these things. I'll just throw one of these guys down just to show you how this kind of works. So we're, we're making, and you can look at actually the crafting suit. So by default with all the modules in it, you know, I'll even get it, I'll even get it module, uh, nines in it. Um, you basically have like, uh, where is it at? Uh, crafting speed of five right now with it. So if you were to throw down, uh, so there's two kinds of beacons options you have, like game you have either these advanced beacons and the wide area beacons. So they both have 50 module slots. Uh, and essentially, and by the way, this is not applicable to 0.6, but I'll show you, uh, it's an interesting problem I, I wanna show you anyways. Um, this is actually not the, the better beacon actually. Uh, right, cause that we have another one which I never researched, but you know what? I also get my point across. Um, if I were to put speed nines into this, so you, you have you have them, so it has a distribution efficiency of 0.5, right? Um, so now it's, so basically it's using half of the module power, so it's basically 50% for each one of these and distributing it to the uh, electromagnetics. So now it's at 12.5 for crafting speed, right? Um, so if I were to take the Crestario beacon, I would do the same thing. Oh, it's the same amount of B slots, right? And you would assume it's the same thing, but with shorter range. Uh, incorrect. That's 16.25 crafting speed. Why? Well, the distribution efficiency of this is 0.75. Much better. In fact, I can go to... I can probably throw in some speed sixes into it, which are much cheaper, by the way. And it's still... It's basically as good as a wide area beacon with, you know, um, uh, module nines in that. So... Uh, the distribution efficiency makes a huge difference, and it's really funny, actually, because if you look at beacons, right, uh, you get advanced beacon pretty fast here. You get it at, like, just one level of energy science, while the, the next one, which is vastly inferior, comes at energy science back three. Um, even when you get to this one, the wider beacon two, it still has the same problem of 0.5. It just allows you to put in five more modules into it. Uh, and I kind of did the math, and it was essentially like this. If you're using... Um, if, you're, if you have, like all buildings around it. Uh, like if you go like, if you use all of the space around it, uh, it's essentially like like the equivalent of using, so like I would I would either need four Crestario beacons to get the same thing, or I would need uh, one of these, right? So it's about twice as efficient when you're using the, the, best, <laughs> the best beacon for it, right? Um, but Crestario beacons are better in every other case almost. Uh, and it just comes way too late. They have fixed this in 0.6, um, uh, apparently slightly due to my feedback kind of on that, I've, I've, I've been told, but uh, maybe not, I don't know. Uh, but essentially, they're putting actually, actually a, par a part of the core mod now, which they're going to make it so that there is actually a smaller version of the beacons, and the large version, and the smaller you're supposed to use more for, I want to use less beacons, but get um, the same result kind of thing, so it's a way for you to use less beacons, but, and, and to me, it's like, it, to me, it's better. Uh, the what they've done because it actually gives you a point to use one or the other um because sometimes you don't want a wide area beacon one in my case the the reason i use wide area beacons for the most part is i uh 
I throw it down around a bunch of miners. And so I do two things. I put a bunch of speeds into it. I put a bunch of efficiencies into it. Uh, that may not be actually a huge... The efficiencies may not be a huge reason why I did that anymore, because I, I, at a time I had a lot of power issues here, but the efficiencies are good for um, reducing power consumption. It also does pollution too, but that doesn't really matter, because when you go to planets and you basically kill all the biters on them, or you just land on plants without biters, you don't really care about that. I do it mostly for, like I said, the pollution... Uh, sorry, the energy consumption. But I'm at a point in the game where that doesn't matter anymore. Because uh, a lot of my setups now are just like, uh, if I were to go here, where's the, where's the, uh, the setup for it? Uh, oh, yeah, I mean, right here. So, yeah, you do like this kind of stuff where it's like you have um, high, temp uh, high temperature heat turbines and you basically beam power into this uh, energy beam receiver. So this is coming from the sun, essentially, and basically just process the, uh, the stuff there. And so this gives me about... 60 gigawatts or something like that, so that's all that's all I needed for the surface, so you know, stuff you can do with it uh, But anyways, yeah, I'm going on a bit of a tangent, so we'll, we'll just stop doing that So I'll now start getting into some of the things that I liked and didn't like about uh, Crest Area with, or, or about space exploration. I think space exploration by the way one of my favorite mods um, hands down um, so there's not too much I can say about um, Or complain about it because it it the challenges it provides you are very distinct um, which is things like, you have these long pipes and you wonder, oh, why do you need long pipes everywhere? Well, because, like, these regular pipes usually use undergrounds to go long distances. It's like, they don't go that far anymore, you know? And it's a, it's a battle of entities, right? You're trying to, um, allow the fluid to kind of go further with less, and so this counts as one entity, kind of thing. That's just, that's just one. It just counts as one when the game calculates it, which is really great for things like that. Um, so some of those challenges, was, like, they're, they're meant to just add... An additional layer to the game that you didn't previously have. Um, I will say that uh, my one feedback for Space Science is that, um, and I don't like it when games do this, is they, they make you kind of repeat the problems that you've already solved, uh, kind of a thing. Um, so a lot of the stuff for uh, the Space Sciences, I feel that could have been condensed down to like three sciences instead. Um, I didn't feel it needed to be uh, four tiers because it is essentially four tiers. Um, it didn't really need to be that much because some of them were just if 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 you condense it down, uh, you can get the same amount of stuff that you have to build. Because uh, I did feel like near the end, I was kind of like, oh, it's like why wasn't this just kind of condensed down? Because um, I, I think it's just they he decided it wanted he wanted to have four tiers, and um, some of them he didn't think he couldn't think of what to do, but could have taken the best ideas for it as well or something like that. I don't know. Um, what's weird is in point six, they're adding an additional tier of sciences. Um, so yeah, it's, that's how it is. And I also have, so one of the main things is sometimes something runs out, but this is not going right now. And going up the production chain is kind of difficult. And if I had to do this again, I would kind of go like, probably add more learning around that. But, but essentially it's like, there's no significant biomass because you're waiting at the base. Um, so biomass is like made down here, which is a part of like the green science packs kind of thing. So, production chains are really awkward in this sometimes. Um, if I were to go down to it, actually, I'll just search for the station for it. So, bio. Actually, I don't think it will find it. Oh. Yeah, it's somewhere. Uh, you can't search for that. For some reason, the name isn't uh, what you expect it to be. Oh, it's like down here somewhere. But anyways, yeah. Uh, things run out, and you kind of don't get an inclination until you don't see that the... This is more of a personal failing, by the way. I should have added some alerting on it. Uh, but um, usually what will happen is something will screw up. So in this case, it would be probably this purple one because that's an intermediate. And it's like, oh, it doesn't have this. Oh, it doesn't have this. And I just don't have enough vitamilage coming in. So it's just there isn't any right now. Um, so that's one of my little bottlenecks that I have to deal with. And it's, it's bring all the science to a halt right now. So, you, you know, that's what I mean. You have to... I would probably put more alerting. That's better in the future, because uh, that's obviously, um, oh, there you go, it just landed. Now it's going to get going again, that's it. So yeah, I don't have very good alerting um, on my stuff, so I'll say that much. Uh, it, is, it is one of the flaws I, I did have in this one. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's there's a lot of different uh, uh, shortages you can have, so you, you have to, it's one of the challenges you do have to kind of overcome and things like that, so. Uh, but yeah, I would definitely have condensed the science down a little bit. Um, it, 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 this is like essentially your, 
XCOM Long War equivalent of of uh, mods. It basically you're here for a long time, um, and it's good. I like that. It's really nice. Um, so again, I don't have coal here, so coal is apparently really important to space. Who would have thought? Um, but anyway, so yeah, that's kind of that's kind of what I would think of that. Um, some of the challenges around. Uh, I liked a lot of the challenges around the Deep Space Science uh, packs because those are really late game. Again, I, this is going a little bit into spoiler territory, so uh, just warning you. But there's these uh, things called Arcospheres, like this. Uh, so they're essentially, um, you, they cannot be created or destroyed. Uh, they essentially just convert into another one randomly uh, some of the time. So what I'll do is, for example, uh, this one, which is a science pack for uh, wormhole data. Um, if you actually look at it, the wormhole data, uh, well, actually, this one's pretty consistent. Never mind, that's a bad example. Uh, let's go back to, go to one of these other ones. Uh, maybe like this one. I think that one's a, yeah, so you can see there's two recipes for it. Uh, but what it actually is doing is it's saying that the machine will occasionally switch to recipe, um, completely random. So it requires epsilon pi for arcospheres and output zeta theta. Uh, for this one, but it will switch over to Omega Gamma for another one. So a lot of the production challenge around that is how do you keep it in balance so that there's no shortage of it? Uh, and the kind of the system I kind of came up with. So the inputs are always the same, which is which is a really good benefit of it. Um, but the system I kind of came up with was I always ask for uh, the things that it requires, but I always active provider everything else that isn't it. So basically, it's active providing out back into the system the arcospheres that it doesn't need, so it just brings to, basically brings it back here. There's a bunch of storage warehouses for it. And all it's going to do is it's, it's essentially going to look at um, what's in storage and what's in the boxes and try and keep it relatively in equilibrium. Um, I did like a little bit of it. Like, a lot of people done, like, really cool, like, statistical math stuff for this. I did something a little bit, like, simpler where I just basically said I count, essentially, um, the amount of... Um, uh, probably the better thing to actually do is show you the outputs and how to convert them. Uh, there's basically a couple of recipes. There's eight different recipes for folding uh, the sphere so that you basically put in two, get two of a completely different one, right? And this is like some really statistical math shit that like I'm probably not that that good at. So um, that's essentially what it's doing. It's just it, you're basically converting two into another two, right? Uh, and then you also have this thing called inversion where you take four of them and you turn them into another four of them which apparently fills in a bit of the gap with uh, some of the recipes here and is a bit just a better way of doing it. But anyways, you need to actually use both. And all I do is I basically look at, so this is essentially, you know, Xi to Gamma uh, to Zeta and Lambda. I can't be fucked to basically write down what exactly it's doing. So I kind of just said this. I said, I, I, I came up with a really simple solution. I'm going to say, if I have a lot of Xi and Gamma, but I don't have enough Zeta Lambda, then probably I should. This machine should be doing its thing, um, because I have excess of one and, a, and not so much of another one, right? Um, so all I did was I said I counted uh, together. Uh, this is like a, essentially a requester, so it's looking at it needs zeta lambda. So this is the amount that it needs. This is the count of that, and the amount that it's that it has, which is xi and gamma, and counts that together. You can see it actually actually has, if you look at the input signals on the right there, it's 151 total for uh, gamma, whatever the first the first two are, the things that it would basically need to consume to produce it. And the requester is the second one, which is the blue. I'm uh, sorry, the, the first one, which is the blue. That's how much it needs. So these machines are effectively enabled at the moment, right? Um, and also it what I will do is I'll add a little bit of a buffer of 12 uh, for the blue, just so it's not like constantly switching between them kind of a thing, because you don't want to have them working all the time kind of a thing. It's my main thing. Um, and so then there's an arcosphere and Xi of eight. So what it will do is it will enable this chest and it'll ask for eight of each of each of these. Uh, and then the basically the machines will take it, they'll consume it, and then act to provider the result back into the network. Pretty straightforward. Uh, or maybe not. So essentially the system I came up with essentially is trying to keep an average. So it tries to say... If uh, Arcospheres, um, it says that if I don't have a lot of, you know, but I have a, not a lot of Zeta and I don't have a lot of uh, Epsilon, it's trying to make more of the thing I don't have. That's what it's trying to do this system. So, 
Um, I think it's one of the simpler, more elegant solutions that you can come up with, but there's some really heavy ones that are really cool as well that you can do uh, when you kind of come up with this stuff. So, um, you know, you got some really neat things you can do. But the, the key is to try and get as much of an accurate representation of what your archospheres currently are. This includes ones that are in chests and things like that. Um, so I have to, I, I can't know what's in a in a requester chest, but I can know what's in some of these other chests. Um, when they when I can set it to read contents uh, wherever they are, uh, yeah, like this one. So when, this one has like a crap ton of of chests, and apparently this one's just stalled. So they're just waiting here, not doing anything, which is a flaw of my my thing. So I should probably not have it have it requesting anything, but um, I, I can't really stop it from doing that. I don't know. Um, it's got it's got its it's got its flaws. Um, I'll say that much. But it requires a bit of finagling. Um, obviously, the more archosphere's you have, the better off you are. Um, this is a really cool puzzle, by the way. This is the kind of stuff I love. I hate things like you know that are like weird. I usually hate things that are like byproducts of chains. But these ones are these ones are great. These are fantastic. Um, so th this is actually one of my favorite problems to solve. Um, other than that, uh, yeah, no, it's it, it was. Just a really, really fun kind of factory to solve. Um, I really like my little system of, you know, provider requester trains kind of thing, and it actually works out really well. Um, it to basically just disable stops if you don't need anything, enable them if you do, uh, kind of a thing. Uh, and also, yeah, I guess I'll go into uh, kind of like my active provider uh, train stops. So I have a system where it's like, it goes like this, it goes like, okay, I have a place I'm making glass at, right? So you have a lot of glass, you know. This is a stop that's enabled, uh, and it can basically have, uh, you know, if it has over a certain amount, it, it basically can support two trains with the L, right? But I have a situation sometimes, let's scroll the way down here. Uh, we have a actor provider system. So I have a byproduct of sand that I just want to get rid of. What do I do? Do I void it? Do I send it to bots? What do I do with it? So to, in my case, I just go, I'm going to use it to something. I'm going to put it into something that's useful for my, my factory, which is I'm going to just make it into glass and the trains can come pick that up. But how do you send a train to a specific stop? And uh, this is the system I came up with. And I really thought, was, I, I don't I don't know if anyone else has done this. I'm sure someone has. Uh, but I wanted a system where it would disable the other stops like disable the passive stops and enable this specific one, uh, right? And so the way I did it was like this: you took you look at, you look at the contents of the of the of the, um, the, the warehouse. If you can ha support a train load, enable this stop. But that doesn't force trains to come here, right? Because the trains will just—they're stupid. They'll just go to the one that's closest to them, right? So um, I also read the train count, and this reads the number of trains coming to the stop. And also includes a stop train. So if there's a train here, there's a count. Um, there's a count of one, essentially, coming out of it. Um, so what that also does, and you can actually see the, the count is actually one right now for this train. Uh, and what it will do is essentially this. If there is no train here or none is coming, uh, enable, uh, uh, do the, set this checkmark signal, right? If there is enough glass to, for it to be on, also set the checkmark signal. I could have probably simplified it with the L, but... It is what it is. I probably should have counted like L and C together, actually, to be honest. I look at this, but yeah, anyways. But very simply put, it's just say, saying um, if both condition, both these conditions are met, I'll put a glass signal to the network. That's what it's doing. And the, the network is I have like all these like little poles everywhere. Uh, you could use like the signal transmitters as well if you really want to. But I have I already had this the entire thing set up. So what it's doing is essentially saying that hey, there is a stop that's available. That's that is a active. Uh, essentially an active provider glass stop so as long as this as long as this train stop is open and it doesn't have a train in it and it doesn't have a train coming to it um it will essentially go to a, a similar stop like this and i'll shut it down and the way it does that is it says hey if the glass signal coming from the network is greater than zero output give me the L, input count of l and the input count of l is like negative 21 gazillion essentially in the network itself so it's taking that and it's going to basically add it to the numbers that are coming out of here. So regardless of what's here, it will always shut down the stop. The, the, the stop will then have a train limit of zero. So all so any new trains will then be redirected to the other stops. And then then you're good to go. And then essentially all that happens is, okay, you know, then now. Uh, and then when the train's coming to it, it re-enables the other stops. So the next train that needs to be queued up goes to, you know, a stop that makes more sense. 
So really, really, in my mind, elegant solution to the problem of really using the bi byproducts and the, the train systems. Really, really cool. Um, and the last thing I did was I kind of did stuff like this, uh, which is like, so this is the spaceship mechanics that you have. Um, so essentially I could go, I can send this guy out so we can kind of look at him. What's he, what's he at? He's, uh, this is Naquid Beast 7. So one of the really cool things is you have a uh, mechanic here they can essentially go and um, bring, make little cargo haulers. And, you know, it is a, it is a space exploration game, so Naquid is one of those things I need from deep space kind of a thing. Um, so you get like shields and stuff. Um, so I have shields. I, I do double walls of shields just because I, f I found that to be actually the best thing to do. You put some lasers on and that kind of stuff. It is kind of heavy on UPS. Um, heavier, I'll say. Because the turrets are basically consuming 0 0.01. And you have to you have to remember I have like 20 ships. So it's all of this times like 20 kind of a thing, kind of a thing. So a lot of the... A lot of the logic that you have to do around these uh, little ships is mostly about okay you need to have storage for them i had a system before where it was like uh i had um i stored like uh, i i basically had warehouses that i'd like i'll put them with loaders and i found that actually bots were much more efficient loaders were really bad at, at efficiency um i've learned they're really really quite ups terrible so uh, i don't use them anymore um and you can do like these little like yeah so you basically send it somewhere, it asks for uh, an equidite in, in its chest or whatever, and then we'll bring it back and everything. You just set up a little like circuit network for it to go back and forth, which is super cool. Um, but yeah, this is essentially that mechanic. I love this, by the way. This is this is great, but I didn't I didn't really use it as much as probably you could have used it, uh, simply because I I found them to be kind of heavier on UPS and also cargo rockets were. Really, really good. I think I think cargo rockets are amazing at every part of the game, especially if you're doing local star cluster stuff. It's really good at that um, kind of thing. But you do, do need to make the ships eventually for going to, far away uh, to places. So in this particular scenario, it's going to uh, this place, which is uh, called the Dark Assemblage, which uh, basically brings me some uh, Naquadite and things like that. And th these mines are very simple as well. Um, the Nequity, you can't have a lot in the trains kind of thing. I don't have very small bot networks that basically fill up all these things. By the way, this is a very, I found to be a very UPS efficient way of doing things. Basically just fills it up and kind of like preserves the rest of the slots. Kind of thing for it and only enables a train stop in certain situations, blah, 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 kind of thing. So your typical kind of train stops. Um, and yeah, I went through a couple iterations and I, d I eventually learned that uh, loaders are very bad. <laughs> So, in a lot of situations, they're not terrible all the time, but they're they're very difficult to kind of do. Um, so it was like, so this was I, f I feel like probably the best kind of stop you can make, it, especially for this in Crestario, because Crestario really buffs up uh, a lot of the bot capacities. So they have like a cargo capacity of ten. Um, so I, I should have been doing this for probably from the beginning. Uh, some of my earlier train um, train stops look more like this, uh, and the thing about this, which is really funny. Uh, and I'll show you the difference. So these are the same inserters. So they only, if you look at that number above, it's like they only insert at a speed of 23.23 uh, because they're limited by the belt. Um, the belt makes it kind of slower because they have to wait for all the stuff to get, get into their grasp rather than it being a more direct insert approach, which would be over here. Um, see, this one essentially says... Uh, like th this one, th oh sorry, right here. These ones do 40 because it doesn't have to go anywhere. It's already in the chest. So direct insertion is always better or direct, yeah. Direct insertion is just always better every single time. So this is why I wanted to do bias myself more towards and I tried a couple different scenarios with it and I ended up going with a bot approach because this is one of my older ones where I would basically try and split it up here and then it would basically have two inserters to basically try and equalize it, things like that. I tried everything, um, and that was it. Eventually, the bots were basically just better at it, you know? Um, and some of the other kinds of stops I, I kind of made here. So these were my old ones. This is why the loaders are really bad, by the way, because they have to constantly check the contents of the warehouse, uh, and warehouses are huge. So this is why they're really bad at it, and you just have so many inserters and stuff doing stuff. That's why you don't want to do that. Um, this is one of my better ones. So if you're using the full speed of a belt, the 90 per second, then loaders are better. Right, but then you kind of use, because it is actually going, you can't really tell because the graphics are kind of weird, but you can't really tell. 
but it is using uh, all of it. So in this case, it makes sense because you're only using you're using basically eight loaders for you know two train stops and and four uh, warehouses. Meanwhile, over here, I have how many is this? this is like this is like uh, 17 loaders for one warehouse. That's like no, this is much worse, and and I wish I didn't do things like that. So I'd definitely change that as well. Uh, things like that. I don't know why this guy is over here, but we'll just ignore that. Um, anyways, yeah, so I have some inefficiencies, as you can clearly tell. But it got me to the end. Um, I beat this game in under 400 hours. Um, I know we're at 400 hours now, but I've already won the game, so that's how it goes. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it was, it was a really cool mod. I would highly recommend it. Um, even with Crestario, it would be good, too. I'm going to say probably when I... I'm going to actually run at um, uh, 0.60... Um, sorry, 0.6 uh, for SE. I'm planning on doing another uh, another little mini run of it, uh, and and and, and I, I, I'm probably not going to use Crestario again, just because I feel that some of the changes they make don't kind of don't put Crestario in the best light necessarily. But I would still recommend it if you want if you're looking for an interesting challenge run uh, to definitely do that because it does bring a lot of things to the table. Um, but I feel like a lot of things that Crestario did do. Um, now base SE does very well now too, uh, and a lot of stuff that you would use Crestario for normally in a vanilla run are not that good, such as fusion and, and, and singularity reactors and stuff. You just wouldn't use that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, it's, it is what it is. Um, but it was, it was a fun challenge. It was really cool. Um, 10 out of 10 for both really good job by the, by the mod developers to basically add that kind of stuff in and to make those. Uh, too compatible really really fun challenge and really great to work with and you can make a lot of really cool things a lot of replayability there um i know i like i'm literally going to be doing another run again unfortunately for people who don't necessarily like um be doing factorial a lot of the time but uh um i'm sorry i, I i'm having a lot of fun with it so uh, i don't know why i'm apologizing for having fun but i am uh but yeah no it's it's it is a, a really great mod um but i i'm planning on mixing it up with some other games as well so uh, with that being said, um, so some of the stuff I want to kind of go over, which was the 0.6 stuff that they kind of have going here. Um, so just my little mini review of the um, uh, other stuff. So they, they're having space elevators. So this basically means that you can connect um, now a, a surface with its orbit and you can bring trains up, which is super cool. Um, this generally majorly changes how we did everything here. Because uh, one of the two main bottlenecks I had was because Caladius is not obviously anywhere near Raspidia. Uh, you can't space elevator that. Um, one of the main problems I had was uh, petroleum was a huge issue with this stuff. Like you see, I have like four coming out of it, but still, like chemical gel was such a huge issue to basically cart around. Uh, but and in this case, you just bring it from the surface. Uh, you'd bring the uh, the petroleum from the surface and become a hell of a lot easier to do it. Uh, things like that, um, and obviously it would change a lot of my landing pads because you no longer bring coal from, you can bring coal from your surface now. You just have a centralized depot or, or, or stop that basically gets it and you just go like, hey, I'm going to go bring it from one place. So it majorly changes the way how I do a lot of this stuff, uh, which is super cool. I, I really want to use the space elevators. That's one, one of the main reasons I'm using uh, Point Six O. Um uh, they're changing the early space design, but they've added two sciences rather than removing anything. So that's kind of interesting. So I kind of want to see how that spike is. Apparently it makes the, smooth, the, the difficulty spike a little bit smoother. You can go around by capsules uh, now, so you don't necessarily need to fill up a cargo rocket to go somewhere. You can now just fly around on capsules, which is super cool. Uh, core mining. So uh, what I did was I just showed you. I basically just placed on a lot of them uh, and then basically just sent them on rockets. Um, as you can see, I don't even use most of the core fragments anyways. So I basically, I have mastered it so much that we make too much core fragment stuff anyways. Um, so I would say I'm not really, I'm not really uh, 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 against this change because I feel like either you get nothing out of core miners or you get way too much. Um, so core scenes makes it now a little bit more middle ground. Uh, so they're basically, the way it balances it is it's going to make it so that seems kind of force you to spread it out so they're spread out across the surface so you're not putting them right the core fragment miners right beside each other um and they're and they're buffing them a little bit uh with that so i think it'll become way more balanced now uh and then there's some module cost reserve uh rework and a lot of the smelting is now changed as well uh and some minor features kind of thing so i i'm going to be doing another run of it um but i think i'm going to be doing just a vanilla sc 0.6 run because i you know i haven't done that yet 
Um, because I feel like a lot of the changes they made, especially with, like, beacons and stuff, they're now, like, a lot closer now. K2 doesn't do as much differently now. It mostly just changes early game production changes and things like that. Um, but I think, I, I still think it would be kind of fun. Um, and I would, I would definitely say, if you are looking to do this game, absolutely run it with K2. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. Or you can just do Vanilla SC. Um, it's just essentially, K2 does, Crestrider 2 does, like, you know, basically Vanilla Plus. I really would hope that they would continue kind of going that direction. Because one of my pieces of feedback, especially looking at point six, is that now it's not, like, it's too much balanced bias towards space exploration that now when I was looking at it, I'm like, eh, I think I'll just run it vanilla. Because it K2 doesn't add that much anymore. So I would kind of like them to kind of double down a bit more on, like, hey, it's space exploration with, you know, a couple cool things added. I want them to go more in that direction rather than more towards the space exploration um direction but that it is what it is because now i have the choice of running it without it and i don't feel like i'm actually losing a lot by doing that uh but it is what it is but yeah anyways um that's it that's all i want to show off uh so feel free to ask me questions or something in comments or whatever if you have anything you want to ask about why the hell i spent 400 400 hours on a single game by the way this is pretty much I, um, with this model alone i spent about a third of my total factory time in it so uh, that's cool stuff. So thanks a lot for tuning in and uh, see you for the next one. Take care.